Hello and thank you for joining us. In today's video, I'm gonna discuss the difference between a short stroke and a long stroke brake chamber. We have a customer in for a non-related issue, but during his inspection, we found the wrong brake chamber installed. Let's get this truck in the air. If you like this type of content, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or when we release a new video. If you'd like to share your experience, leave it in the comments below. Let's get right into this video. So we're about to get this truck in the air. Now, make sure you're using the proper jacks and the proper lifting equipment. Make sure you're working on flat ground and chalking the vehicle before getting under it. We're gonna get it up in the air right now. I'm just gonna raise the rear axle so I can take the both tires off. I wanna show you the difference between the two brake chambers and how we were able to tell which one was wrong and which one was the original brake chamber. So let's get this truck in the air and get right into it. since I'm using these fork style column lifts, I'm having to secure the axle that I'm working on so I don't damage the airbags. Just leave them hanging. So we got the front chalked already. This is gonna be high enough. I'm gonna get these wheels off and I'm gonna show you the difference. Now this truck doesn't have air. It's not building up any air. <clears throat> well it is, but the truck is not on. We're gonna leave it like this. Uh, let me go ahead and get these wheels off. <clears throat> they got these uh, chrome covers, usually just to keep the dirt off. Uh, usually I'll get them off with some <clears throat> some nice channel locks. Let me grab some channel locks and we'll get these off. We're just gonna use some nice channel locks. They sell the fancy ones to get um, to get these covers off, but you can just use a towel, a shop towel. Now you don't have to take the wheel off to to take the brake chamber, but I wanted to give you guys a good look. So I'm gonna continue to get these off here and uh, show you what we found. These are pretty dirty. Now, if this was like a show truck or something, I wouldn't be beating on it to get it off. But this one's pretty, pretty rusted. Looks like it's been off-road a lot. I know this guy, so he does a lot of off-roading, uh, doing new construction, so most of the roads are his going off the road, so let me get a screwdriver. You can get just a, a, a snub screwdriver to get these covers off. <clears throat> and then also I wanna spray this down with some PV Blaster or some WD-40 because these bolts don't look like they, they had any lubrication on them. They're pretty dry. So we got the stub, that's what we're going to be using to pop off the last cover that we have here. And I have some WD-40. WD-40, you want to kind of like before you need it, but these bolts are super dry. So you're not going to be able to get those bolts off 
And with the stub, just kind of pry this cover off without making any damages. And these are just cover, these are covers to, for a show and protection as well. All right, so we got that off. Now, this did keep some protection because he has got a lot of roll grime that could have been built up on the threads and made this job even more difficult. So, I'm not down in these covers. We got it off. I got the PB blaster or the WD-40 on the bolts. And let me get the air gun and get this wheel off. So you want to have your tire bar ready. This is actually kind of high off the ground. Let me go down with it just a hair. Because I don't really need it that high off the ground. I mean, that's, that's enough right there. You can see how it's off the ground right there. Make sure to have your safety glasses on as well. All right, let's get these off. If you guys are doing this on a daily basis, just let the gun do the work. Meaning let it balance out. Try to handle the gun lightly. Ooh. Or you're not fighting with it. Ooh. And that WD-40 really helped. Alright, so we got them all off there. It's only one, one wheel. So gather these, keep them all close. Especially if you are working under the truck, store them away correctly. If not, you're gonna be kicking them all over the place. Push on top of the wheel, bar at the bottom. Now, I'm gonna put these towards the back of the truck. As I mentioned, you don't have to do this to change brake chambers, but I'm doing this to show you on this particular truck for demonstration purposes. Put the tire iron in the opening of the wheel and kind of shake it against the drum work its way off. This guy's been off-road a lot. So there's a lot of dirt buildup. That's gonna make the job a little bit tougher. All right. Just verify everything's lifting up safely. Make sure safety first with everything, guys, and, girl, and girls. Safety first with everything. Don't rush your jobs. I know that we're measured by production and it can get kind of hectic trying to keep up. But safety first. We're gonna get this truck up in the air. Now, this is really overkill. We don't really need to be doing all this, but I wanna give you a good view. And... Okay, so what's the difference? What happens if you do put a short stroke brake chamber on a long stroke brake chamber application? Now, as I mentioned before, this is gonna be messing with brake balance 
This is a 30-30 style brake chamber. It has the parking brake and the service brake installed. This is, they, they're doing two functions. When air is not applied, this spring has, is a forcing force that's forcing this spring against this push rod and setting the parking brake. Whenever you apply air to this section of the, of, the, of the brake chamber, it releases the brake. Now you're only going to be using the back side of the brake chamber, which is the service side. Now for a regular stroke brake chamber, the distance on that push rod is going to be shorter than a long stroke. A long stroke, of course, the distance on that push rod, whenever you are applying the service brake, is going to travel further than a, a short stroke brake chamber. So whenever you mix them, you're not getting equal brake braking power. You can get breaking more on one side if this this uh, in some cases it can actually start to pull and it can cause some some damage cause some actually some wheels to lock up if you don't feel that brake power happening you can actually brake even harder and cause wheels to lock up that you're not that's actually not supposed to be locking up another uh, one way you could tell the difference is where the airlines connect to the brake chamber as you can see this is a square square connection that's, that's indicator of a, of a long stroke brake chamber. I'll give you another view of this section here, which is a round connection. That's gonna be an indication of a short stroke or a normal brake chamber. Another indicator is the, the length of it. This is about 10 inches on this brake chamber, and this one over here is just under nine inches. Now, the, the parking brake side of the brake chambers are similar. It's the service brake side that's gonna be lo a longer distance. So that's what makes the difference between these two brake chambers. We were able to tell that it's it's that this one was the wrong one because this one still shows to be original. You can see there's a lot more road grime on it. Everything looks original and you can see the connection here. This one looks like it's just been replaced and you can see the round connections.